I'm going to give you a really quick general run through of how to go about setting up and tuning your cam angle. Now, what I normally do is I set both of these tables at zero to begin. So I'm going to zero these tables out. I'm going to go in and I'm going to tune my low cam table, my high or my, my low cam uh, fuel table, my low cam spark table. I'm also going to make sure before I do any tuning that I shut off my VTEC. If I go into my parameters here and my VTEC, I'm going to go and set my upper and lower bound very high. I might set this at 9,000 RPM so that I don't trip VTEC and turn it on. I want to only tune my low cam table. So after I've made those changes, I'm going to definitely hit the upload button, upload that to my K-Pro. So now I've zeroed out all my tables. I'm going to command no cam angle. I'm going to be on just this low cam table here and just this low cam ignition table here. But we can see if we're jumping in either of these low cam tables, we're going to see that we have zero degrees as one of uh, the, uh, the tabs here. It's going to signify that we're on this zero degree cam angle table. If we look here, we can go to 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, and then 50 degree. So we're going to have different fuel table and ignition timing table based on the cam angle that we're operating at. So if we jump back in here, wherever we have this set, it's going to go and ride on that particular fuel and ignition timing map at that particular point. So if these are dynamically moving here, our fuel and ignition timing tables will also be dynamically moving around. So they're going to be bouncing between the tables. So for example, in this table here, let's just say I had it set at 35 degrees. Now if we go back into our table, we're only going to have a table associated with 30 and it's a table associated with 40. What's going to happen in this case, it's going to look at the values in my 30 degree table and my values in my 40 degree table and it's going to average 50% of each. So depending on whatever it reads here and whatever it reads in that same region here, it's going to calculate that and it's going to turn that into our injector pulse width. Same goes with our ignition timing. If we look, if we're operating in that same range here uh, and it's going to be uh, the same range here, we're going to see we have a spark timing difference. It's going to look at both maps, add up the value, divide by 2 because it's going to factor in a 50% weighting factor because we have a value of 35 and it's going to apply the ignition timing to the actual ignition timing output. So we're going to see that the reported ignition timing here is going to be somewhere between the values 